coffee, bagels, and energy drink for breakfast. Since we started the program, the Nutrition the Natural Ovens program, with the complete diet, the balanced diet, I have seen a total change in the students and the environment within the school. It's amazing. Now that I actually have a job here, I was hesitant once again to start and found that the atmosphere is entirely different. The students are, are calm, um, they're well behaved. Um, I don't have to deal with the, the daily discipline issues. Out and out disciplining of students, that just isn't an issue here. Every year we are required to file a state report. On the state report, they include information regarding the number of dropouts, expulsions, drugs, weapons, suicides. Since we've started this program, zeros is what I have had to report. That's a pretty nice report to fill out. Our biggest problems right now at this school are parking in the parking lot and student tardiness. I don't have the disruptions in class or the difficulties with student behavior that perhaps I experienced four years ago before we started the food program. Now that I concentrate, I think it is easier to get along with people because now I'm paying attention to what they have to say and just not worrying about what I need to say to them. Healthy food has had more of an impact than we thought. We believed that it would help settle the kids down which it has done, but I think we were surprised the impact it's had on academic learning. Personally, I think I've been able to demand more academically from my students over the last few years. I notice in conference time, a lot of parents will say, you know, that nutrition unit is really making a difference. This is the first generation in history that might not outlive their parents because of health and lifestyle issues, nutrition and fitness. I can't buy the argument that it's too costly for schools to provide good nutrition for their students. I found that one cost will reduce another. I don't have the vandalism. I don't have the litter. I don't have the need for high security. We've cut $5 million out of our operational budget in the last two years. We did 35 focus groups in the community, and not one person brought up the issue of you should get back into junk type foods because they see that healthy lifestyles is important. I believe in three or four years every school in the country will be into a nutrition program because the more schools that are going in that direction they're seeing it does make a difference. We've got to stop using our most precious commodity, our kids, to make extra money. Schools throughout the UK have banned GM foods a long time ago, as have schools in selected cities from around Europe. In Italy, in fact, schools are required to serve organic foods, as they are in Berkeley and Palo Alto, California. And around the United States, more and more schools are removing junk food. They're removing the sodas, they're removing the candies. It's time that we extend that ban to include genetic modification. There are four major genetically modified crops, soy, corn, cotton, which is used in cottonseed oil, and canola. Actually, all four are used in vegetable oil. Now, soy and corn have a lot of offspring, derivatives that are found in many of the processed foods that we eat. So it's to avoid genetically modified foods, it's often easy to avoid processed foods, and you can avoid the two at the same time. Now, there's also Hawaiian papaya, and a little bit of zucchini and crookneck squash, and Quest tobacco. And that's the only genetically modified crops that are currently commercialized. The tomato was taken off the market, the potato was taken off the market, and several other varieties have been approved but not introduced commercially. Milk from cows treated with genetically modified bovine growth hormone are also considered genetically modified. And there are also enzymes and additives that are created from genetically modified bacteria or fungus. Now, typically, they're not labeled. Aspartame, which is a sweetener, is one, is one exception. The same companies that produce GMO-laden processed food in the U.S. market produce GMO-free products in the European market. We have a lot of power as consumers. We have to exercise it. We should be asking everywhere that we buy food if their products contain genetically engineered in ingredients and insist that we will only buy products from them that are demonstrably free of GMOs. So we have to get the word out and educate people to describe how these foods may be impacting ourselves and our children 
so we can make those choices and move the market. Studies show that the majority of people do not want GM foods. And interestingly, the studies also show the more educated people are, the less likely they are to, to feel comfortable about it and support it. And the more, the more knowledge people have about it, the less they like it. Eyewitness reports from all over North America describe how several types of animals, when given a choice, avoid eating genetically modified foods. The cows didn't care for it. Uh, we put BT corn and conventional corn in the feed book and they cleaned up the conventional corn and left the BT corn. They did not eat it. In South Dakota where they leave food plots stand for the wildlife that the deer won't eat round the Freddy corn. Our knowledge of genetics is still far too rudimentary and genetic engineering technology far too crude for the release of genetically modified organisms into the environment and their entry into the food chain to be justified. This is particularly important when one bears in mind that genetically modified organisms once released are uncontainable and unrecallable if problems happen to arise. These might be the basis for real, and we shouldn't use, scientists are not supposed to use strong words, but these might be the basis for real ecological and health catastrophes. That's a fact. People who boost genetic engineering are going to have to do a mea culpa and, uh, and come clean and ask for forgiveness like the Pope did on the Inquisition. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. You know, we made a mistake. And let's start yeah. over. I'd just like to speak as a father. I think that we have to think of the next generation. And I would hate for us now to make decisions that prohibit them from making their own decisions later on. I wouldn't like to sell my children's future for a handful of magic beans. We're part of this huge uncontrolled experiment. Millions of people are being fed GM foods every day without knowing the impacts on health, behavior, or our children. These foods could be eroding the health of the people of the planet, and the impacts on children could be far worse. With the rise in obesity and diabetes, with the dramatic results in Appleton, with the growing body of research, that suggests that GM foods are not safe and should never have been approved. A complete overhaul of our diet and school meal programs is long overdue. Join communities all over who are organizing to remove genetically engineered foods from school meals. To find out more, go to gmfreeschools.org or call the GM Free School campaign at 641-209-1765. By taking simple steps now, we can protect those we love and future generations.